Hello, I'm Simon Fisherbecker. You probably know me better as Dorian Moldavar from Doctor Who, or the Fat Friar from Harry Potter. And this is Everything Geek Podcast. Your attention, masters, mistresses. All systems functional for the Everything Geek Podcast. Hey, it's James Arnold Taylor, the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi and Master Poe Cool in Star Wars The Clone Wars, and you're listening to Everything Geek, the podcast. Jackpot with the Everything Geek Podcast. Hello, everyone. You're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast. I'm your host, Tori, and joining me is co host Maureen. Hello there. And also joining us is very special guest Greg Cruz, who played Greg, aka Snoring Guy in The Walking Dead, a peacekeeper in the Hunger Games movies, and a police officer in Need for Speed. So how are you, Greg? I am well. That's great, definitely. So yeah, we'll get we'll get right on to the question. So my first question for you, Greg, is how did you decide you wanted to be an actor? I've been I've been one my entire life. When I was a kid, I was fascinated with drama, and I watched a lot of television. Pretty much, <laughs> pretty much watching too much television. But uh, <laughs> I, got older, I just I you know it's just something I wanted to pursue. And um, when the movie industry moved to my state, where I moved to the state where I live in in the U.S., I was more than fast. I had so many opportunities to get into it, and so I I've been giving it a full run for the last three years and i've worked in so many i've worked in well over 60 major productions multiple times nice that's really cool so my second question is how did you get involved with the walking dead originally um well walking dead is kind of like a uh, it's it's uh in Georgia, The Walking Dead is the biggest thing that's filmed. I mean, we have a lot of big projects, but it's kind of like a right of entry, and you know, for everybody here that's trying to break into the business, it's that one thing to add to their that you get to you get to say that you've done is work on The Walking Dead. So it's um, it it's kind of it's kind of a rite of passage, really, um, to be in the film industry in, in Georgia, and for. Uh, but the casting directors and everybody involved in that show were pre or good friends of mine. And they had found a spot to get me in. And of course, Greg Nicotero, the executive producer, you know, wanted, uh, wanted, wanted my look on his show. You know, he wanted, he liked my look enough that he went ahead and booked me for it and had gave me this great character to work with. Nice. That's really cool. Very interesting. My favorite question is, what was it like recording the scenes in the episode Infected when Patrick entered your room and started eating you? Was there any interesting or funny parts of doing that scene? Well, it was very ticklish. I can only I, imagine. <laughs> not used to having someone that close to me unless they buy me a drink or dinner first, you know? <laughs> yeah, but, definitely. But no, it was it was very fascinating. And plus, you know, there's like more than two, three hundred people there, and I'm the only guy, I'm the only person there out of every everybody there that that gets to wear nothing but his underwear for three days. So you know, it, was, <laughs> it, was, yeah, it took a, it took a little getting used to that one because all I was wearing was pretty much boxers and some prosthetics and a bathrobe, walking around talking to everybody. It was it was kind of fun. It was. Really, it was kind of surreal, really. 
especially once you start filming and all these people that you've watched, you know, you've seen these characters and you're, you're, you're living it. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, definitely. That's very cool. So my fourth question is, I've heard you also appeared in the background of another The Walking Dead episode a couple of seasons ago. Can you talk about that character? It wasn't really much. It was kind of a, it was weird. Um, I was booked as an extra to work on that, uh, to work that scene. And I had made the long drive because uh, where they film at, out in the country, out in a little bitty Georgia town called Sonoya, Georgia. And I lived about 70 miles north. And I made that long drive. And uh, apparently they had me picked out for this role before I got there. And they had this big rush to get me through hair and makeup and wardrobe and all that good stuff and get ready, you know, get prepared. And then, of course, they're not shooting my scene till the end of the night. So <laughs> I'm sitting here pretty much tucked behind somebody's minivan all night waiting for my scene to come up because we were out in the middle of the woods. We were on this. We had this whole back two lane road locked down from from one end to the other. And of course it's full of, you know, production vehicles. You can tell a major productions in town because you got like 20 different tractor trailers and tents and you name it. It's just, just spread, you know, the set. And of course everybody's cars are parking. It's nuts. It's a madhouse really. But, um, it, <clears throat> it was really interesting to work just to get to know the crew and the cast. I had a chance to meet everybody. Uh, John Bernthal actually surprised me. Um, I didn't realize how much of an animal lover he is. The guy, the guy who plays Shane, um, the whole time we were there, he was, he had his dogs with him and that was pretty fascinating. It's very interesting. I didn't know that. That's very cool. Yeah. That's he's, very animal, nice. he's all into animal rescue. So, you know, anything, you know, he, he takes in these dogs and he trains them and he, you know, I'm like, wow, this guy, you know, it's more to this guy than just, just, I never even heard of the, be honest with you, I didn't even watch The Walking Dead. I didn't even really know anything about it. I just knew it was some zombie show. <laughs> do you keep up with it now, though? Of course, yeah, yeah, I do now. I'm kind of hooked into the show now. And then, of course, yeah. being this character that I have, you know, trying to promote it, of course, it's, <laughs> I kind of want to keep, you know, I kind of want to keep up to date with what's going on with everybody else. And, of that course, a lot of my friends are parts. I have a lot of really good friends that work on that show, too. It's great. Yeah. My fifth and final question is, do you have any upcoming acting roles or other projects you'd like to talk about? Well, right now we are working on The Hunger Games. We are filming. We've already done, well, the first, the first Hunger Games was filmed in North Carolina. And we've got the second Hunger Games, Catching Fire, which was filmed last year here in Atlanta. And we've got three and four coming up, which is the Mockingjay book. They've split it in the middle and they're taking two movies out of this book and so i'm of course i'm a peacekeeper i'm pretty much i guess kind of the bad guy in this so you know we're we're doing um uh, we're doing execution scenes and we're uh we're we're doing a lot of we're doing a lot of mean i think we're doing a lot of mean things but it it, it look it's a lot of fun so in fact i'll be there for the next three days coming up i've got three days i've got to go Nice, that's very cool. Yeah. So anyway, Greg, thank you very much for answering my questions, and I'll let my co-host Maureen ask some of hers. Of course. Um, okay, well, my first one's kind of, it's, because as, like, someone who wants to be an actor themselves, I'm always kind of wondering, what's life like in between acting jobs? Being an actor is, you really have, you have to get dedicated. It's one of those things that you got to be, all, you need to get all into it, and you need to, you know, a lot of people don't realize that you're going to go, that you could go a month or two without work. I mean, you need to, one thing you got to do is learn how to budget your money or make sure you have something set aside. Um, I have a 13 year old son. His name is Dakota. And one of the biggest things I've taught him growing up is, is you want to learn two fields in your life. You want to learn the field that you want to be in, the field that you want to be. And you also want to learn another field that will help you sustain while you're working your way into it. Um, so like for instance, I'm a career, you know, I wait at tables in restaurants. I do, um, I, I'm very technical. I've, I work for, um, 
work for Verizon Wireless on the side doing installations for uh, internet services. So it's just, yeah, you, you it, it, cause you're not, and sometimes you're going to find yourself booking roles that don't really pay a lot, but it, it's always promoting you. Uh, Walking Dead was one of those. I didn't get paid a lot of money to work on the Walking Dead, but the results I'm getting from it and everything that's coming out of it is more than, you know, it's worth more than any kind of money I could have been paid, you know. Yeah. It's, I mean, the experience alone was priceless. And that's, you know, it's, it's like any other job. You start at the bottom, you know, I'm, I started out as a background, background as an extra, and I'm slowly getting these principal roles and these good roles. But you know, it's it's a matter of them wanting, them seeing me want to do this, and everybody knows that I'm in, I'm in, I'm into this for good, and I want to stay there. So that's the biggest part of it is just making sure that you can self-sustain while you're making it. Because yeah. trust me, you work hard enough, you work hard enough and long enough, you'll get where you want to be. That's, that's always been something that's kind of more worried my parents more than me, but like I can see kind of. But um, a, anyway, uh, my next part, question is: if you could work on any project or with any other person, who or who would it be, or what would the project be? Oh my God! I've actually, actually, I've met, I've worked with some of the people I've wanted to work with my entire life. I've worked with uh, Sean William Scott, the guy who plays Stifler. Um, I've worked with him. I've met some of my heroes. I've worked with Morgan Freeman, Michael Douglas. Um, I've worked with um, um, uh, uh, an actor that actually inspired me for other things. Um, his name is Kenny Johnson from The Shield, from the show called The Shield. I don't know if you remember that from the um, early 2000s. Um, Probably wouldn't. <laughs> Oh, he, he, it was a cop drama. It was a really good cop show. But um, he got me inspired into, you know, uh, bodybuilding, physical fitness, because overall that's what's been getting me the work now is my love for fitness. Um, but uh, who else? Um, I've been trying – actually, I've been wanting to get in the, the Transformers series because I'm a big fan of the Transformers. Um and uh, there's a show that films out of Canada called Psych. Is another show that I've been really wanting to work on, but I don't know if I'll be able to. I don't know. I think they're working on their last season. So, but those are two projects right now that I'd really like to be involved in. As far as actors, I've still. I mean, I've I've worked in movies with Will. I've worked in two movies with Will Ferrell, and I still have not worked with him. If that tells oh. you anything. <laughs> now, same with John Goodman, another person I really want to work with, and I've. Worked in the same projects as him, but I've never worked with him. So, and yeah, Robin, Robin Williams. Those are mine. Uh, just it's it's uh, wow. Um, so, well, I I've actually I'm a bit of a fan of the Hunger Games. So I, I'm wondering, have you read the Hunger Games books, or how much did you know about it before going into the movies? I did not know a I did not know anything about it. Um, be honest with you, I'm not much. I don't read a lot. Um, I should, but I just really don't. But um, I worked on. Um, I worked. I got booked as a peacekeeper on Catching Fire, and we actually went out that night and we rented the movie off of the Red Box, and I got to watch it. And it looks like a great series. I love Woody Harrelson. Jennifer Lawrence is amazing. And of course, Liam Hutcherson, you know, he's doing, you know, he's doing really good. Um, and of course, who's the, the guy who plays Thor? What is his name? Um, I'm terrible with names. Oh, his, his brother, Liam Hensworth. Yeah. Oh, it's Liam. Yeah, his brother's in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Chris. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, but yeah, but yeah, I, I, I get that confused. I need to. I need to work on that. But I'm so forgetful. Um, but yeah, I tell you, there's just so many projects. I'd love, you know. Also, I'd love to be a part of the. I love these superhero movies like Thor, the Superman, yeah. Batman thing. This new Batman thing coming up with Superman and Henry Cavill and Ben Affleck. I'd love to get a part of that. You know, just to say I've been a part of that. Same here. <laughs> Um, so what was it that, what was it like getting to work on the Hunger Games? Was there kind of, 
a lot of attention around the filming or would you have people trying to get a look at what was going on that kind of thing oh my god that was nuts um <laughs> paparazzi was everywhere we had to wear as a matter of fact when we we've been doing uh, what they call second unit shots which i don't know if you know a lot about how production works um you run your first unit shots your first unit is always going to be your principal actors your your dialogue and all that your second unit stuff is always going to be stunts crowd reactions um anything that doesn't really involve any dialogue or anything it's just you know um like car crashes like crashing the car or um when they do car jumps or um, uh, car chases, anything like that, um, yeah. giant battle scenes, those are all pretty much what they call second unit because they don't really need the principles there. There's no dialogue being ran. It's just showing the action. So we've been doing a lot of second unit stuff, and they're still, even as isolated as we are, they're still so weary of the paparazzi and things getting leaked that we have to wear um, a special smock, a smock over our peacekeeper costume, so people don't recognize. Oh my don't God. <laughs> um, when I worked on Catching Fire last year, there were people coming out of the woodworks, just taking pictures, taking pictures, and there you can actually Google them right now. They're all over Google right now. These pictures that they got of us uh, walking to and from set, um, or just out taking a break. You know, I like to. I smoke cigarettes, and I'll step out and smoke a cigarette. And, uh, or, you know, just do something to catch, you know, take my mind off everything. And I'll step out and there's like 20 people with cameras waiting for me. And I'm not even a big star. I'm not even a star. You know, I'm just pretty much, you know. Well, that's, that's, that's mad. Well, yeah. that, that's it really for my question. So I think, is there other people that's going to worry? Oh, yeah. 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 So we're now opening the lines up if any of our listeners want to call in or leave questions in the chat. We do have some questions from our Facebook page. Meanwhile, one of our co-hosts, Dan, unfortunately couldn't make it, but he left some questions for you, Greg. Um, of course. His first question was, how much time did it take to put on the walker makeup? We, I sat in that chair for three for about three hours. For the first look, um, it took three hours to get all that on me, the makeup and everything else. And then we went to set. We shot the scene where I'm getting bit in the throat, and Patrick comes in there, and they do. They had me hooked up to a machine that spewed the blood everywhere and made the blood, and of course, you know, the, all that, you know, the, the the stuff that you saw in the show. And then when that was done, I had to go back for a second look to go ahead and. It was kind of more of a clean up to change everything around, and it took about another two hours to do that. So a total, I spent about a good five hours just alone in um, makeup and um, FX. It takes a while. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, and no. a sec. You want to say something? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, uh, he's just going to go on to his, uh, uh, his second question. Oh, please. Okay. Yeah, his second question was, how would you describe the time you spent with the walker makeup? Uh, awkward at first. Like I said, I, I was wearing nothing but boxers for two and a half days, three days. But uh, um, it was it was a little uncomfortable because the solution they use for the blood it gets very sticky when it dries, so I can't just sit anywhere. I have to be careful where I walk, and then while I'm in, you know, certain frame, certain points of the character, I'm wearing contact lenses and I can't see, so I have to have somebody escort me wherever I need to go. Um, I actually had somebody, and that's all their job was, was to walk me to different places to, you know, I drink a lot of coffee to make sure I had coffee or water or something to drink. Uh, make sure, you know, make sure that I was taken care of because I couldn't move around freely. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's, it's a lot of work. It is. It's, it, and it's, um, we had to, kept, we kept having to reshoot these scenes and we couldn't, for some reason, something wasn't going right. So I'm laying on the ground. And I'm sticking to the ground. It hurts. It actually physically hurt when I was getting up. Um, 
good thing to remember is if you ever have to wear a lot of prosthetics and fake blood, shaving is a really good, really good piece of advice. Be sure to shave. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm not, even, uh, I have, not like I'm abundantly full of chest hair or anything, but still it was sticking, you know. <laughs> oh God. I couldn't wait to <laughs> Couldn't, I couldn't wait to work the show, and I love working the show, and I love being in that character, and I love, I, I love everything I did on the show, but I just could not wait to get out of that fake blood. <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting. And Dan's, Dan's third question is, what was your feeling on the set? As far as towards everybody else? Yeah, I believe so. Oh or like God. the atmosphere, yeah. The atmosphere, oh, wow. It's I can't describe it. It was, I really can't. I've never in my life experienced this. And I've worked on a lot of movie sets, and I've worked a lot of different types of jobs. I have, and, and as like I said in the interview earlier, I have nothing but positive things to say about my experience in The Walking Dead. Everybody there was amazing. Um, and, you know, I was, you know, I was cutting up. I spent the day, you know, I spent two and a half days cutting up with Andrew Lincoln, Norman Reedus. Scott Wilson, all of them. I mean, we're just going back and forth. Everybody's trying to make you feel at home. Um, everybody wants, you know, everybody's fighting for your attention, you know, or, yeah, and you're talking to people that you've actually been wanting to talk to for a long, you know, you've seen on television. It was just a great, it was a great experience. And everybody there is wonderful. Not only that, but the, um, some of the crew members there are good friends of mine from other jobs. So that helped out a lot too. So they kind of got to, it was great. They learned a new respect for what I've been trying to do. And I've, you know, of course, you know, it, it, it was just a great experience overall. There's nothing negative about it, except for that fake blood. Oh, <laughs> <sighs> <Yeah, definitely. laughs> uh, yeah. Note to self, never allow anyone to put fake blood on you. <laughs> oh, no, it's horrible. <laughs> Yeah. Cheapy Halloween fake blood is just awful. Yeah. So, Greg, Dan's fourth question is if the action figure of your character is being made, what special feature would you like it to have? I want the Kung Fu grip. That'd be cool. Remember that back in the back when they had those G.I. Joe figures with the Kung Fu grip? I don't know. I, I don't know. I hope they don't go all cheesy on it, you know, because, they, they, you know, the action figures never look like the person that they're supposed to represent, you know? Uh, I, think, I think the company that does The Walking Dead does a fairly good job of it. Some of the other companies definitely don't, but I know I like The Walking Dead figures, how they look. No, oh, they look great. McFarlane is, does a great job. I've got one of their I'm – a, I'm a diehard fan of Alice Cooper. Um which, you know, I've been trying to get, I've been trying to Twitter and Facebook his fan pages and everything just to see, because I know he saw me. And I've been, I've been watching him. For, he's been my favorite, one of my favorite entertainers for 25, 30 years now. And just, you know, I, I just, I know he saw me. Uh, he saw my role on TV and I want his opinion on it. You know, I don't, but um, I don't know the action figure. I don't know. They should, they can make me look a little bit more muscular, you know, give me a little bit more detail. <laughs> Maybe a little change where I can, you know, where the guts can, you know, you can press a little button and the guts will pop out. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, that would, that would be amazing. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, that would actually, be, you know, yeah, that would actually be one of the coolest features on the figure ever. I mean, I remember when I was watching the episodes. I mean, I'm a bit more used to the Walking Dead now. I think everyone kind of has that feeling when they first watch it. It's a bit scary and deck. Then the more you watch, the more you get used to it. And even that shocked me, that scene where he just stands up and his stomach slash guts just fall out like that. It was just <laughs> so extreme. <laughs> it was brilliant, though. I mean, it was just so unexpected. Well, you know what that is? You know where that came from, don't you? You know the story behind that. Tell me, I might have, I might have forgotten, but go on. Oh, what it was, and Greg Nicotero explained it to me. He also explained it during the Talking Dead. And actually, I got about three phone calls that night from my friends that, of course, had to remind me because I don't watch horror movies. Um, the Dawn of the Dead, the old George Romero movies, Dawn of the Dead, did a scene just like it where the walker, the vampire, the biter, whatever you want to or the zombie, biter, walker, whatever you want to call him. He comes in, he goes into the room, 
and he chews the guy's throat and he starts eating on the guy or the person. And then when they get up, all the guts. That was actually inspired from a Dawn of the Dead scene. So what I did was actually a tribute to Dawn of the Dead. It's very interesting. I actually wasn't aware of that. Yeah, it's really cool. And yeah. I got phone calls that night from all my fr a lot of my friends saying, dude, that was Dawn of the Dead right there, man. That was wicked. Which, on a side note, George Romero was asked to direct two episodes of The Walking Dead, and he didn't want to do it. Yeah, that, that, that I actually did here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I remember. I remember. I remember reading an article about that and the way he referred to Walking Dead as a more casual kind of flick, and I was thinking, no, I'm not quite sure about that. <laughs> but yeah, everyone has their own opinions, <laughs> right? Yeah, but, but I mean, the the funny thing is, though, I mean. You can change the phrase jaw dropping to mean stomach dropping in your character's case quite literally because his stomach does completely drop. Yeah, that was wicked. <laughs> yeah, definitely really cool. And uh, I'm gonna start I'm gonna start using that for my six minute ab posting for that. Six minute ab here we go. New yeah. Stomach dropping. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. This is, you know, I thought about this too, you know. Um you ever watch, uh, you know, Phineas and Ferb is, right? Yeah. I've heard of it. I haven't actually watched it, though. It's on the agenda. Okay. Um, the guy who does the voices for Phineas and Ferb is um, Victor Martell. And he is the guy who played Patrick, who, of course. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> right. So, yeah, that's just weird getting over that. You know, this is the same guy who voices all these kid shows. And. I'm in the bathroom the other day getting ready to go to work, and my kid has uh, one of my uh, my son has this mouthwash, and it's Phineas and Ferb on it. And I'm like, how how ironic is that? Uh, very, that's actually really cool. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I took a I had to post that on Facebook. I'm like, wow, <laughs> Phineas and it's Ferb a, mouthwash. It's a little bit like the whole the girl who voices Lilo is the same girl who plays Samara in the ring. I still can't get over that. <laughs> right. Too funny. Yeah. Yeah. And anyway, Dan's final question is, if you had to create a backstory of your character, what would it be? Oh, I I had that one set up a long time ago. Um, I, I, I took this character because um, the first three days I was pretty much treated as an extra. I was... I was uh, I was with the extras and of course all the background walkers uh, on the extras end of the you know because I didn't have any dialogue I was pretty much just doing what we call crosses and so I wanted to I wanted to look like you know I was trying to pull my weight around the prison so every shot that they 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 cut this but every shot that I was in I was either carrying something or I was fixing something I was carrying firewood up to the to where they eat at and I was fixing the bus and so I figured my character was an ex-mechanic or or an ex-handyman and of course he gets to the prison and that's all he does is he's working constantly you know he's he's working on stuff and he's fixing the you know he's fixing the bus in case they have to use it or he's he's over there doing inventory and seeing what kind of how much ammunition because it was it was part of the day where I was counting like bullets and looking at the guns and making sure that you know, the guns and everything were, were oiled and, you know, the bullets and we had plenty of bullets and, you know, checking out, making sure the knives, you know, all the knives were sharp. You know, I even had my own little work table set up off back to the side where they parked the cars at. So they, they kind of had my, my character was kind of developed for me. So he was just kind of a handyman, got caught up in the apocalypse and Woodbury and, you know, made his way to the prison. Yeah. That's clever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I also think I heard that he came from Woodbury as well. The tender governor had run in season three before, you know, the prison guys like Rick and Daryl brought them all to the prison. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Oh. Yeah. See, I don't think I was part of that group. I was I don't think I was part of that group. Weird, I actually thought I saw that in an interview. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. think I I think I just kinda straggled in. I think I probably stole a car or something. 
you know, <laughs> I got in there. Yeah. yeah, it would be pretty cool. Um, yeah, so anyway, Greg, thank you very much for answering all of our questions. It's been a pleasure having you on the podcast. It's been fun, y'all. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and hopefully we can talk to you again sometime. Anytime y'all want, just let me know. I'm, I'm, I'm usually up, so. <laughs> okay, see ya. Bye. Make sure to check out our podcast links. Check out our website, website.futhinggeekpodcast.com slash EGP. Check out our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash Podcast. Check out our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com slash user slash Geekcast. Check us out on Twitter, twitter.com slash everythinggeekp. Check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash official Podcast. Check out our Mixcloud profile, www.mixcloud.com slash everythinggeekpodcast. Email us at the below email, everythinggeekpodcast at gmail.com. Check out our companion podcast, Everything Geek Comic Cast, www.facebook.com slash Make sure to check out